Hello students, today in your algebra class we're going to be working on Xbox factoring. But before we begin, let's try a couple quick warm-up problems. This would be a really good time for you to pause your screen and try working on these two warm-up problems. Hopefully you've paused your screen and you're now just checking the answers. So for number one, you'll notice that the quantity of 2x minus 6, we have that twice. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out twice. And then because we know how to FOIL, we would multiply the 2x times the 2x, the 2x times the negative 6, the negative 6 times the 2x for our inner, for our inner, and negative 6 times negative 6 for our last. Therefore giving us 4x squared minus 24x plus 36. For number 2, the same exact idea but because we can FOIL, we would get x squared minus 25. So, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve factoring problems using the Xbox method. Now, this method can sometimes be confusing, but what I'd like for you to do is make sure you have these notes down because they're going to help you throughout the course of these last four or last couple of sections of this chapter. Now, over here we have what's called a quadratic equation. Now, in this quadratic equation we have, it says ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are, co are coefficients that are numbers. Now, to start off with this x box, what we're going to do is we're going to take the a and the c and we're going to multiply them and write them in the top part of our x. On the bottom, as you'll see because i now changing this arrow to red, is where we're going to put our b, or our linear term, the term with the x. Now on the left and right side of our x's, or of our x, we have something called L1 and L2. Now what happens is, because we've worked on diamond math problems, L1 times L2 has to be equal to the top part of the x, which is a times c, and L1 plus L2 is going to be equal to the bottom part of our x, which is our b. So once we've completed our x, we can go into the box portion of our xbox method. Now the cool part is, is that on the top left part of the box, there's really nothing to think about when you do this one. This just comes from the square term of our quadratic, so ax squared. The bottom right portion is also what I call a mindless box because you just use our constant, which in this case is our c. The l1 and the l2 you get from our box or from our x portion. So what we're going to do with this was this is how we're going to set it up, and we're going to try several practice problems together. So let's try these couple practice problems together. Now, if you look at example one, you'll see that the y squared is our squared term, but there's no coefficient that you can see. So we're going to put a one in front because there's obviously only one y squared. So one times eight is eight. Then remember, we take our linear term, the term with the x or the y, and we put it at the bottom. So this is six. Now what two numbers multiply to 8 and add up to 6. Hopefully you've chosen 2 and 4. So I'm going to change these into a different color real quick just so we can make sure we emphasize that. Okay. Now to get the top left portion of the box, remember we take it from the squared term. So we pull it from here, and in this box we write 1y squared on the bottom right portion of the box we're going to write our constant, which in this case is 8. So these we don't ever have to think about because they come directly from our quadratic. Now the corner boxes we pull from our red numbers, so 2 
it becomes 2 and it becomes 4. Now the only other thing we're going to add to this is our variable which in this case will be x I'm sorry will be y. Now if you look closely it's almost as if we could take this quadratic and rotate it so that if you look carefully they line up perfectly. So this is y squared this is 8 and 2y plus 4y is 6. So that's how we get those specific numbers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the factoring portion. So what we first want to do is we want to cover a couple things up. So we're first going to cover up the bottom two boxes and see what 1y squared and 4y have in common. In this case they have a y in common. Then we're going to do the same thing for the top two boxes. These two have a 2 in common, a positive 2 in common. Then we're going to rotate this square a little bit and look at the two left boxes which 1y squared and 2y they have a y in common. Then we're going to cover up the right two boxes to show that we have a positive 4 in common. So now you've successfully factored 1y squared plus 6y plus 8 and we could say that this is equal to y plus 2 and y plus 4. So let's try another one together. Coefficient in front of this k squared in example 2 is 1 k squared. So 1 times 28 is 28. And the bottom we pull from our linear term which is negative 16. So we have to think of two numbers that will multiply to 28 and add up to negative 16. So if it makes it easier we can kind of make a list of what times what is 28. So 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7, and I believe that's it. So we want to look at the, these three sets of numbers and see which one could possibly give us 16. So 1 plus 28 is 29, or 28 minus 1 is 27. No. 2 times 14, or 2 plus 14 does work out at 6. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use 2 and 14. The only problem with this is that when we add these two up, they give us 16. We want negative 16. So if we tried making one a negative, this wouldn't work either. So we're going to change them both to a negative. So that negative times a negative is positive, or so negative 2 times negative 14 is positive 28 and negative 2 times negative 14 sorry negative 2 plus negative 14 is negative 16 so we're gonna fill in our box k squared 28 and again we pull the these next two boxes from our x so negative 2k and negative 14k So, again, we're going to use the same boxes earlier to help us cover these things up. So let me adjust this really quick. Okay. So we're going to cover we're going to cover the top are the bottom two boxes. So the case the k squared and negative fourteen k have a k in common. The bottom two have a two in common. However, 
because our linear term or the term with a k has a negative it supersedes or it's stronger technically than the other number which is the constant so we make it a negative k we're going to do the same thing with the two left boxes so we have k squared and negative 2k in common so these have a k in common and earlier I said because the linear term has a negative it supersedes the 28 which is true but it does not supersede the k squared or more powerful if you will than the k squared so we keep it a negative or keep it just a regular k we're going to cover the two right the two left boxes in this case we have 14 in common but because the k overpowers the constant we say that it's a negative 14 therefore when you factor this you get k minus 2 and k minus 14 and those this is your factor and answer let's try two more together so for this one it's the same idea the k squared doesn't have a coefficient so we're going to give it a 1 1 times 42 is 42 the bottom is going to be 23 because we pull it from the linear term then to make this easier we're going to make a quick list of what multiplies the 42 so 1 and 42 2 and 21 3 and 14 6 and 7 so from these what combination could we have that would give us a 23 which if you look carefully should hopefully be this 2 and 21 so this becomes 2 this becomes 21 and we would go through the process again k squared 42 and these come from our x the left and right part of our x's so 2k and 21k so just like we had done in the previous page we're going to create a box or we're going to cover up numbers so we'll cover up the bottom two k squared and 21k have a k in common going to cover up the top two these have a positive two in common then we're going to do the same thing for the right two boxes these have a k in common and this one has a positive 21 in common so when we write this out as factors we get k plus 2 and k plus 21 and we're going to do it again for this last set and again notice how this has negatives so 1m squared plus 10m minus 24 we do 1 times negative 24 which is negative 24 this becomes positive 10 and we go through the process again what's going to give us 24 that would be 1 and 24 2 and 12 3 and 8 4 and 6 and that's it so which one could possibly give us a 10 24 minus 1 now 12 minus 2 yes so we're going to use 12 and 2 but after further review you'll notice 2 times 12 is 24 when we really want negative 24 so we're going to make one of them a negative so we'll make the 2 a negative because 10 plus negative 2 is positive 10 which is what we want so we have m we have m squared we have negative 24 then we have 12m and negative 2m so again we're going to cover the bottom two boxes and we get m is in common 
We're going to do it again for the bottom two, and this has a 12 in common. Notice how the linear term, the, the term with the m, does not change the rest of it because it is positive. Then we're going to rotate our box again and cover the right two. This means that this has an m in common. And when we cover the left two boxes, we get negative 2 in common. Therefore, our factor is m plus 12 and m minus 2. Now it's your turn. Try solving these two problems, write them down on your notes, and we'll take a look at them in class. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.